call the April 1st, 2019 Lincoln County Board of Commissioners meeting to order. If you'd like to join me to, in the Pledge of Allegiance. Oh, that flag right here. Ah, I, admit, I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you. Okay. For correspondence, North Central Regional Planning Commission newsletter and KCCA Conference, Kansas County Commissioners Association. Let me go to that. I was going to go to that too. That's at the end of uh, May. It's uh, end of April. Sorry, April 30th. Yeah, end of April, month from now. Injunction, right? which is a lot closer than the other one. Yeah, I may go to it. Have you been to that last year? I did not. I've actually not gone to the. The, uh, just the commissioners one, which I think would be interesting. Um, we have a bill from Lincoln Park Manor for two hundred five dollars and forty six cents. Um, I don't understand this coding here, but it's from Phoenix Supply, Cadet Pro. Some kind of kit component for a tank must be a toilet, and. Oh, in the seat. Yeah, that's what it is. Um, we also have correspondence from Lincoln County Council on Aging. March 27, 2019, Lincoln County Council on Aging Board would like to inform you that Charlene Watson resigned from our board at the last scheduled meeting on March 26th. Due to health reasons, um, Jolene Jody Webkey expressed interest in fulfilling the remainder of Charlene Watson's term ending December 31st, 2020. County, County Council on Aging approved Jolene fulfilling her term. Attached are the letters from Charlene and Jolene. Uh, my understanding is they changed their bylaws so that we are no longer appointing their members. If that's true, uh, that means they're not subject to open records or open meetings, potentially. So I think we might want to address that. And that doesn't ask for our approval of their appointment. So we have two sets of minutes. We had our end of the month meeting and last Monday's meeting. So that would be March 25th and 28th. So last Monday, we had a visit from the interim director from the ambulance service. We did evaluations with the county treasurer. We talked with Doug McKinney and Kelly Larson about the um, grant proposal for the courthouse renovation. Uh, not renovations necessarily, but I'll just... Restoration. Restoration. There you go. Thank you. <laughs> An R word. One of those words. Um, <laughs> Um, we did not, uh, go ahead. Oh, I was just going to say, I see Michael Davis, member of the, uh, the, uh, evaluations. What are we going to review them? In the, do we have to review I them? I think we've set aside next week, didn't we? Okay. We set it because today okay. we have to okay. make sure we're done at, by 12.30. That's what I, I thought, so. Mm -hmm. Okay, thank you. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. Um, let's see. We talked about 120th Road. We had a request from David Gersman to appoint a committee to assist the highway department for planning. And we were provided a, the, um, a binder with some road guidelines in it. County appraiser came and reported on valuation changes. Um, we had an executive session about the nursing home with Mr. Hay and county attorney Jennifer O'Hare. And we approved the increase 
for six months of employment to Timothy Line. Yeah, that's at the bottom. We have a set aside time on April 8th to do highway department evaluations, which will be an executive session. Okay. The board agreed to um, continue the 10 o'clock meeting time at this time. Maybe this time of year is typically when it changed, but we're going to continue with 10 o'clock until we discuss it again, maybe harvest time. And we are going to have our board of health meeting on May 6th <clears throat> at 9 a.m., which will start one hour before the commission meeting at 10. And we adjourn until the end of the month meeting. I would entertain a motion to approve the minutes from 20, March 25th. If no one sees any need for correction. I still move. Second. I'll, we have a motion and a second to approve the minutes from March 25th, 2019. If there's no further discussion, those in favor, vote aye. 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 None opposed. March 28th. Um, we met to do accounts payable and payroll. We did decide that we would get a countertop built for the existing, what do you want to call it, cupboard that is in the commission room where we're going to move to. So we decided to accept the bid we got from Menards to do so, which was about, unfortunately, like a quarter of the price that we had sought locally. Thank you. Um, we transferred money, $10,000 from the general fund to the transportation bus. We transferred 29322 from the general fund to the county rescue squad. Um, made a motion to purchase the countertop, $509.52. And we had an executive session to discuss the EMS department employees before we had continued on to um, have our interviews for the day. We moved to change the status of the emergency management vehicle from a public safety officer vehicle to a taxable fringe benefit, according to the information we had seen on the federal standards. And we approved payroll in the amount of $185,572.77. And then accounts payable in the amount of $423,477.08. We then performed two interviews. And I don't see any corrections. I would entertain a motion to approve. Move to approve. Second. There's been motion and seconded to approve the March 28, 2019, end of the month minutes. All those in favor, say aye. 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 None opposed. And that concludes our correspondence and minutes. I guess at this time, you, you would be Nikki. Yeah, I'm Kim. I'm the director. No, you okay. probably called the schedule. Okay. Hi, Kim. Hi. And your name, sir? John Gashat. John, nice to have you here. Please join us. Um, I'm uh, the executive director at NCK CASA and Hope's Place Child Advocacy Center. And we um, serve the 12th Judicial District that's including Lincoln County. And we've been um, here since 1994. We are celebrating our 25th year advocating for children in our communities. And NCK CASA has served over 450 children since we opened our doors. Um, in 2018, five out of the six counties in our judicial district filed 122 seat cases, child needed care cases. Uh, right now we have 17 active volunteers, 10 are working cases, and we are serving 23 children in our district. ACASA is sometimes the only consistent adult in a child's life. They count on them to be the voice in the court. ACASA will stay with the child throughout their case, which could take anywhere from six months, and the longest that ACASA, NCK ACASA has had was 10 years. Uh, CASA becomes a very important um, part of their CASA child's life. NCK CASA and Hope's Place Advocacy Center is requesting the commissioners to sign a proclamation declaring April Child Abuse Prevention Month in Lincoln County. We, if we could, we'd also like to put a few signs and some pinwheels out in the courtyard. And we want to thank you guys for your time. And I have a volunteer with me, which um, said his name, John, shut out. Do you want to say anything? 
Well, the question came up in Mitchell County, do we, <clears throat> do we actually have these kids with us? No, we don't. They're in foster care. And then we, we, meet, we develop a relationship with the kids that hopefully uh, provides them some security as they're in strange places and sometimes getting moved and so forth. So I have three of those 13, is that what you said? 23. And, uh, and they're split up. One's in one town, one, two in the other. And uh, so I, I go see one of them once a week and the other every two weeks until they're farther away. And then we, we do uh, speak for them in court, so to speak. We, uh, it depends on the county, but in, my, in the case that I have by prior to court, by the, all the attorneys, and Kim will be there, I'll be there, uh, the social workers will be there, and we'll, we'll discuss what we think is best for the, the child and, and uh, then present that in court. And so um, Technically, we speak for the kid, uh, but we, the, the big benefit in my case is the little child that's by himself, a boy then, <laughs> he has really struggled, and uh, so we have, you know, I've really, I, um, we go have pizza once a week, go to the park and play, and ride a, learn to ride a bicycle, and learn to play catch and things like that, you know, that maybe a grandfather would. And so it's an awful good case, the cause. And Randy, do you live out east, south of? 14, Th south on 14. South, okay, that is, I was thinking there was a, when I was down here, there was a Loman out east. That's my cousin, Vernon Loman. Oh, okay. he, he was on 18 about. Okay. Two miles east. I live about four miles south of Fortin. Okay. Yeah. Now, where are you guys out of Boyd? No, uh, our office is in Concordia, Concordia. but we, yeah, but we serve the whole 12th judicial district. Okay. And I'm out of Boyd. And you get some funding from somewhere? Um, I have to do about a hundred thousand dollars worth of grant writing uh, funding to keep us going. Um, the commissioners, uh, the counties do. Um, so much money to us. So Lincoln County is part of that. That gives us a, a little bit of money to keep us. Um, going as well, but yeah, we all of our fundraisers and everything. The reason we do so many is because we need a supplement and keep. Otherwise, if we don't have that funding, we can't advocate for children in our community. Okay. The volunteers aren't paid. No. We do get reimbursed on mileage, but not hours. I did have a question. What kind of relationship is allowed to be established between the cost of volunteer and the foster parents? The oh, the cost of volunteer and the foster parents? Mm -hmm. Yeah, they're allowed to um, get information from the foster parents and talk to them. Um, uh, there's not, like, we can't just give information to them, but we, we um, work the same goal. I mean, we want to make sure that the child is, you know, being taken care of and stuff, but they communicate all the time. Oh, yeah. Yeah, and, and they check on the child to see what's going on or when they have activities or um, things like that. So, and they're in their home quite a bit. Yeah, and I'm even the single mother in this case, uh, you know, as sad as all this is, she, well, I mean, she's welcomed me into her home. Mm -hmm. and, uh, but the foster parents, yeah, I, I need to call here the, today and set up meetings for this week. Mm -hmm. but, uh, now, do you go to court with them and stuff like that? Too? Yes. How do you, you, but they have... If there's a real legal issue, there's got to be some attorney, too. Well, they have a guardian ad litem. Every uh, seat case, the child has guardian ad litem. But the, the thing with the system is, most of the times, the, the guardian ad litem has never met the child. So they're just going off of paperwork. And what ACASA does is they um, become bonded with the child. They get to know the child. They talk to the child. They meet with them once a month, at least. And so they actually know about the child. So they can bring back, and we can get more information than social workers um, can so we have a more well-rounded um, aspect on what's going on in the case. So we that's what the cost of brings is that relationship that the GAL just doesn't have time to do. You know, I'll communicate with the schools, with the therapists, with the court, uh, with in this case there's a probation involved. So, but if the, now if the child leaves the community, then you're just that's just it. You're out of it. No, we follow them. They, oh, we stay with them until their sink case is closed, they're adopted, or they're um, reunified oh. back into the home. So well, that's, no matter, that's why sometimes our cases. Kind of like a big brother years. or something for them. Yeah. Well, to, go ahead. Go ahead. I had one more question. So, does your organization perform any sort of statistical analysis on timelines, time frames, or scenarios as far as 
the process is concerned. I mean, There's no way for, I mean, every year we have to give stats to national, state, all the way across the board because of our funding. We have to give multiple stats. The problem is I can't give you a time frame. Like, uh, literally a case can take six months or it could take up to ten years if that child's going to age out. There's no way for me to be able to tell you. In his case, it could have been done uh, a couple months ago, but things had happened. So then now we're back to the drawing board. I know, I, well, yes, and I, and I understand what you're saying. There is no way to to, to say but, that how it should be or could be. I'm just saying I can give you of, your 450, of your 450 total. I can't give ever... you from 450, but I can give you like every year. Mm -hmm. I can say um, like this age, like the zero to two years, how long they were in the system. Right, and whether, whether rights were terminated or something mm -hmm. like that. Like that yeah. kind of stuff. Yeah, we do that all the time. Okay. Did you have a question? Uh, well, but I am a program comes out of Mexico mm -hmm. and uh, it's readily uh, popular in most places and sometimes it's the only only person if it goes to court that does have the child's interests in mind. Mm -hmm. Okay. I would entertain a motion to I would so move. Sign the proclamation. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, it's been moved and seconded to sign the Child Abuse Prevention Month Procla Proclamation 2019 for the month of April. If there's no further discussion, those in favor say aye. 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 And none opposed. And then I will get a copy to upstairs and leave it for you guys. Okay. And yes, it is okay for you to put your stuff in the yard. Yeah. Okay. Thanks. Did you bring that up? No, it's left over from last year. Oh, yeah, we leave them every, yeah. Usually the commissioners just have one. Yes. Thank you so much. You guys have a good day. Thank you. giving you some this time. Okay.
<laughs> and I have one more thing that I'll give you at my presentation.
saw that on Facebook this weekend. Somebody had a beautiful like that and just one of those big holes that were flipped in the front end of that hot tub. Because it was mad. It was flipped in the front end. That reminds me of you saying that. Would you still can on like your work? Later she found out they had traveled over a mile down to the highway in this bull and five cows. I said, I know the difference. I know it's a cow. I'm from Iowa. <laughs> <laughs> you know? Yeah. They had a good range of four naval weapons. And that one night, the defense was when we got the guard check deal.
seven. Yesterday, so. Oh, I know. I don't think it's quite that. But he's getting pretty. Did it do pretty yeah. good? Did it, yeah, you did I, that. Did it lose too much? I don't think no, he did. Well, that's I mean, good. Max takes care of all that. Max handles it. All that, so I don't know. Yeah. Didn't the start coming? Tough luck there at the start. Tough luck. Yeah. 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 I think after that, I had three or four sets of twins. Oh, really? Because, man, we had some mean weather there with the wind and the cold and the rain and the ice. Yeah, no Most of them were backwards or something wrong. Sounds like Nebraska lost like a million hands. Yeah. They really caught her. I don't think so maybe maybe that just maybe if you have an answer for that. We got Rhonda here. I have that. I call it frightened. I call it panic. They transferred me to someone and I said, fine, and they told me yes, she was there. The lady was not to go to yell at me for her. I said, what do I do now? If you can get your family to need services, what kind of services? And she said, they just called me. I said, where is it hosted? Where do we go?
it's a contract to guarantee employment. That's not contracted. A contract would be 1099 wages. She's a W-2 employee. You don't get a contract pay, do you? No, you're an employee. I get yeah. Yeah. Okay. I don't know how that. I mean, I don't know how. You I mean, you, you get a, you get employee right. benefits and you get employee paycheck. Right. Yeah, you're not contracted. You just sign a contract because they guarantee to employ you for a certain amount of time. Yeah, because the state requires it. Yeah, but that's not that's not contract labor. Um, I would say we need to set aside probably time. Let's see. I would say the fifteenth. That's not a holiday, is it? Because the next week is a holiday. You're going to have them next week. Oh, yeah, would you mind coming back down? And Because you're right, we have we have an open agenda now that we have some cancellations, so would you mind coming back, let's say, we have 1045 to 11, maybe 1115? That's a good idea, thank you. Well, do you guys, you guys did the one before, and then we have to do it first before she comes. So do you want to do... It shouldn't take more than 15 minutes, should it? We have 11.45 to... Or, I'm sorry, 10.45 to 11 is our next appointment, which is coming up. And then we'll have 11 to 11.15, and then if she comes at 11.15, we can do an... Well, that'll be an additional second session. Okay. Would that be okay? All right. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Would you mind getting us the paperwork done that we need? Okay, I believe we can go ahead. Um, on the on the agenda, we have Julie Walters and Rose Landis from North Central Flint Hills. Good morning. Good morning. I know, I think I've met all of you before. I'm Julie Gilbert Walter. I'm Joe Wallace. I'm Joe. I'm out. Randy Loma. Alexis, yes. <laughs> you got your hands full. Well, first of all, I want to thank you for making time on your agenda to talk about the North Central Flint Hills Area Agency on aging. I know that there have been questions about the programs and services that we've been delivering to Lincoln County. And what I provided to you are a couple documents. Uh, the first is the fact sheet for Lincoln County. This is for 2018 and basically delineates the different programs and services that we've been providing here in Lincoln County. As you probably know, our offices are based in Manhattan. We have another office in Salina, uh, one in Emporia, and uh, we serve 18 counties. So we're, uh, we've got a lot of things going on, but we are really appreciative of the work uh, that happens here in Lincoln County. We know that there's been a lot. There's been a lot of transition in the last uh, year and a half. And I want to also recognize uh, our board members who are here. Uh, we have Glenn Stegman, who uh, is on our board of directors, and Cynthia Nelson, who's on our board of directors. And she's also the more rec the most recently appointed uh, silver-haired legislator from our county. So, uh, or from Lincoln County. And also with us is Judy Albers, who is the chair of the County Council on Aging uh, here in Lincoln County. And I know uh, Bob Loveless is a member of the County Council on Aging. Anyone else that I'm forgetting? She's vice president. Uh, okay. Uh, our, the vice chair is here also, the County Council on Aging. And of course, Rose Landis is here. And she's been attending the county councils on aging meetings and very faithfully for the last several several months, actually probably over several years. years. Mm -hmm. So uh, what you have in your fact sheet, I'm just going to go over it very very um, quickly because I know time is limited. But uh, in your county, uh, uh, right around 27 percent of your total population, age 60 plus, is uh, over age 60 plus, and that's 882 people. Uh, you also have about 30% of those people who are living alone here in the county. And about 10% of the 60-plus population um, have incomes below the federal poverty level. So that gives you a picture of, of the seniors in your county. Uh, you can see in the next box the different uh, funding requests 
that our agencies made to Lincoln County. Uh, and uh, in 2019, uh, we essentially uh, were asking for right around $2,000 uh, of money um, to go. That, that 897 of that was for the Senior Care Act, and another 1295 was for administrative funds. Uh, we also, I'm sure you're familiar with your assessed valuation, and congratulations, your assessed valuation is going up. Very good. Uh, the bottom line here in terms of estimated economic impact is the amount of federal funds that come to your county. Uh, our auditors tell us that a seven multiplier goes into federal funds that are in a county. Are, and you are sh we're showing the economic impact of the services and funds that come to your county totals right at $828,000. So for a $2,000 investment, uh, I think you're getting a pretty good return if you look, look at the multiplier. But even if you don't look at the multiplier, you can look at the grand total of dollars invested in aging services in your county, and that totals $118,316. And again, you can see where those services added up. Uh, um, and uh, that's pretty significant. And that's absolute, That's where the multiplier, the base of the multiplier comes from, by the way. Um, this doesn't necessarily calculate, though, how much of these funds are generated by our local income or, or um, income tax or sales tax. These are these are just services that our agency provides in your county that we, you know, we. Uh, I guess I'm going back to page one when you said it's a two thousand dollar investment for a return of eight hundred twenty eight thousand two hundred twelve, but that's not taking into account the investment that each person has made with their income tax. No, that no. then gets refunneled back to the county, right? That I'm just looking, we're just looking at it as a total of, of what this board of what gives. our agency. It's what, it's what North Central Flint Hills Area Agency on Aging, based in Manhattan, Kansas, provides in services and the multiplier effect of that, those dollars here in your county. But when you say the $2,000, that's just what is given from our property tax by the Mission, that's basically. correct. That's, that's not correct. including anything that all the people pay in when they pay in their income tax every no. year and all that. Okay. No. Okay. It, it's basically that two thousand dollar that you that you paid in two thousand eighteen is what your singular investment is. County money paid to Yes. Yeah. To mm -hmm. our not, agency. Not money that we pay individually to state and federal agencies. Yeah, and then comes that's back. That's what she right. said. Yeah. Right. Yeah. But yeah, we know that. You, right. you guys, you guys. A lot of people don't understand yeah, that, though, right. so I just wanted to point well, out. Well, there's all kinds of taxes. and some are different than others. There are. There are. How do yes. they get this seven times multiplier? Well, you That seems a little high because, well, I mean, I'm not yeah. against that list. It's just yeah, $800,000 worth of, right. I mean, I. I guess you could say the people stay here because we have the services, and when they stay here, they're going to spend more money, well, which stays here and mm -hmm. multiplies. Is mm -hmm. that the idea? Yes. And this is, okay. and remember, most of the dollars that our agency has are federal dollars. Mm -hmm. And when our auditors, and they just made their presentation like, oh, I guess it was middle of March, so about three mm -hmm. weeks ago, they said you, you, they use the seven multiplier for federal dollars because of a federal program that, yes, and that's the economic impact. Uh, so, yeah. but, but if you talk to your local chamber of commerce and ask them what multiplier they use, they'd probably say more like five, but still, it's pretty significant. Yeah, I'm just always curious where they come up with that number. Yeah. Okay. So. But anyway, I'm not, a, no. it's not no big deal. Really. It's, it's, yeah. it's, it's cool to ask questions. Yeah. So, and then uh, a lot of times, uh, People want to know what we're doing with the uh, congregate and home delivered meals. And you can see that we have the Lincoln Senior Center providing these meals here in Lincoln County. And you can get a picture of what uh, the number of meals that were provided and the value of those meals um, in terms of what were uh, provided. So you can see that in fiscal year 2018, uh, 14,549 meals were provided. Uh, the value of those is 77,864, and then it's broken down between home delivered 
and congregate. And of course, the congregate meals are, you know, are the dining center meals. Okay, those are when people come to the dining center and eat. Or I think it can also include some people that come to and get takeout meals, and they're considered congregate. But the home delivered meals are people who are that are getting delivery by. So home from the donations volunteers. that are collected on site or at any point in time for the Friendship Meals Program, is a check issued to you from no. the Lincoln Senior Center? No. The way this program works in our 18 counties, with a couple exceptions, but I'm just going to say generally the way it works, is that those dollars are considered participant contributions. They're collected in an anonymous way at the Senior Center and then deposited to be deposited counted by, I give you the rules, counted by two unrelated meal volunteers mm -hmm. and deposited daily in a bank account that's set More up. than North Central? Yes. So do you have that number for what the deposit was for any given year? Or? I can get that. Yeah. Um, no worries, but you know, that go, that is part of the, of the federal, those are considered federal dollars because of this being a federal program and, and So compliant. you have to take whatever deposit was given to you and pass it back to well, it goes to it goes to pay Rose's time. It goes to pay for. I'm just wondering if you if you have a total of seventy seven thousand eight hundred sixty four dollars spent on meals in Lincoln County. That's correct. How much money did you recuperate from Lincoln County? We can find that out. Yeah. I don't. It's not. It's not mentioned here. Yeah. But Rose, do you have any ballpark figures on that? I don't. Okay. We I'm can get that sorry. for you. But essentially, because this is a federal program, it's of course considered. But federal. they do pay. Some people pay for those. It's a, yeah. it's a voluntary yeah. participant contribution. Yeah. There's we, there's a suggested contribution uh, of three dollars. Three dollars, three, dollars, three, dollars, three fifty right now, I think. And the um, full cost of the meal uh, in 2018 was five dollars and twenty five cents. So if somebody was going to go over and say, "Hey, I just want to buy the meal today. I don't want to fill out this paperwork," because that's the other thing we have rules that have. People we have, have some assistant. people come here, just not seniors, just get them there yes. and pay that five. And we encourage pay. that because yeah. that, that that it all helps keep the program going yeah. and, and thriving. I guess I'm saying if the, if you collected three fifty potentially per meal at fourteen thousand five hundred forty nine meals, that would be an income for you of fifty thousand nine hundred twenty one fifty. So then the actual payout from North Central Flint Hills would be more like twenty-seven thousand, right, not seventy-seven thousand. But, but let me just say that not everybody contributes. That's fine. I just wanted we to know what that out. number is yeah. because that changes what the. If you're saying the output from North Central Flint Hills is seventy-seven thousand, it may very well be more like thirty thousand or forty. It's all considered federal money, Alexis. So, so once that contribution is made, it's considered federal money. But we can't give you the break. But you. But you collect it into your organization, though. It, whether, whether it's federal money or not, after it's been collected, it still goes into your organization. I'm not saying that you're not footing the difference in the right. meal program, but it's more like maybe 30, 40,000, not 77. We don't know because you haven't really reported the deposit amount. It's all considered federal money. Once, once those donations are made, the auditors and everyone considers it federal money because of the nature of the program. But we can give you the breakdown, no worries. I have a question with on these. You have some case management. I see different charges here. Uh -huh. What 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 does case management mean here? I, I don't know what all this is. Yeah, and that's fine. Uh, our agency has professional uh, social workers. Actually, we have had nurses, and we do have a nurse right now who goes to people's homes, and when. A, when somebody calls us and tells us that, hey, somebody's struggling, senior or a family member might be calling us and saying, hey, we gotta, we're thinking about sending mom or dad to a nursing home. Uh, can you come out and, and tell us about the Senior Care Act? Can you come out and tell us about okay. some of the other They're kind of like advisors, but they're like professional advisors. Yes. and, and maybe, what, maybe a nurse or a, or a professional uh, person. Absolutely. Okay. And what those people have, uh, they have authority. They know what programs are available. They can tell. They can the assist on the procedures you would need to do all this stuff. I mean, That's yeah. right. But they can also connect people to different programs and services that are available either through our agency or through community. And the goal of this program, and essentially the goal of our organization, 
is to help seniors and family caregivers sure. and to stay independent away from the doorways of institutions, hospitals, oh, and nursing sure. homes for as long as possible so that they can continue, and that's, we don't say this, but basically any time we're able to help provide services at home, it's helping people oh, yeah. be where they want to be, and it's helping them stay in the community where they can continue to pay the property taxes and... Mm -hmm. Oh, yeah. Right. I think it's good. I just wanted a definition of what, what that was. And yeah. actually, the def there are definitions or more, you know, there's sort of... Well, you have them there, I guess, yeah. don't you? Yeah, we yeah. do. But yeah. I'm happy to explain further. No, we well, that's, no, that's true. Uh, my question is, if you... any All of these services that you have listed, which there are over a dozen or so, assessments and counseling and homemaking care and home health services and respite services and case management, da, da, da. all of these things, if a local person was to call in to access mm -hmm. this information and get services by your organization, where do you send them out? Salina? It, for Lincoln County? The, the, case manager, the case manager would come from Salina. Okay. Yeah. So we, in our county, have access to any of this through North Central Flint Hills directly through Salina. That's correct. Okay. That's correct. And if some person didn't know where to go for this, would they get contact Becky in the breath and now that she's running it? They the, might contact the Becky if they were with the, um, I mean, more likely if they were con if, if connected can, with the can, meals program at the Lincoln Senior Center. Right. Um, How would they get a hold of these case management people? Is what I'm well, wondering. we have an 800 number. Well, okay. it's partly the way we, and this might be something we can talk about, keynotes. Yeah. Is our publication. We send it out to more than 40,000 households. Not quite 40,000 now. But we are happy to add people to our this mailing list. So that's okay. one, one way. I know in, in the past, I'm, uh, the county coordinator took names and made referrals to us. Mm -hmm. uh, we try to make, I mean, you've got a copy of our brochure. Uh, brochures are available. And um, so those are some of the ways. Okay, I was just curious how they, have, how they have access to it. I believe recently um, the Sylvan Senior Center, Sylvan Senior Center, had contacted uh, the organization, and then you guys actually sent a SHIC person to come to the center, and then they scheduled appointments and saw multiple yes, people. That was it, that was during our SHIC enrollment or mm -hmm. Medicare enrollment season. Which so just, you'll actually send people on site. Whether it's to the senior center or do they go to people's homes? Well, let me just say this: our case managers are are, are the social workers or the nurses. They're the professionals that will do this. They go into the in home. They go in the person's home and talk to them and talk to the caregiver, find out what's needed, and and if we can help, they will refer or create a plan of care. The senior health insurance counseling program, which is helps people navigate through Medicare. Um, we rely on volunteers. We rely on, vo on volunteers or community partners to take the training and then when we do, and we do events, SHIC enrollment events throughout our region during SHIC enrollment season, mm -hmm. and then during that time we want that volunteer and a bunch of others as well as our staff to come to a place and we will help people enroll. But we also know that there's need for volunteers in communities to be there to help answer people's questions. They can always call Manhattan. We're happy to help. But um, we all we also realize that you know we we can't be here all the time, mm -hmm. and so we is the training free. The training is free of charge. Yes, for sure. Mm -hmm. That's nice. Yeah. And I just want to also let you know that we are considered, our agency is considered uh, the leader in Medicare benefits counseling in rural Kansas in the state. Now there's one other group in Wichita, they do a lot more sessions, etc. But we are considered, you know, the premier place for training and leadership in terms of getting the word out about Medicare benefits counseling. But I will also say we are always in need of volunteers. In fact, right now, in the next month or so, we need people to call us and say, hey, I want to do a shift volunteer. Okay, and let's see what else can we talk about. Oh, I just want to mention that we do pay, or did pay in 2018, and it's going to probably be the same in 2019 or close to it, 
uh, $22,602 in wages uh, from the Friendship Meals program. So that's, that's in addition to the dollars that we, because we're paying for the food mm -hmm. and we're paying for... That's just wages. Is that yeah, and that, and that doesn't count wages from Rose or the people in the Manhattan office. Administrative. Okay. The people on site. That's correct. Okay, so that takes care of the fact sheet. Do you have any questions, other questions? Because I'm, I'm happy, than happy than to explain further. The other, another document I gave you, and I also gave Judy and our board members, is our official request for funds for 2020. You'll see that in 2020, our request for funds is $2,259.97. You might want to round it to 2000 260, uh, just for the sake. But if you want to send, if you want to give us exact, that's great. Anyway, this is our request for uh, 2020, and it does reflect a $67.75 increase because there was a an increased use of senior care act services in 2019. I'm trying, yeah, 2019. Get these years mixed up. And the formula is based on a base plus usage formula, based on all of our 18 counties. So that's what that's why you see change. Up so it's down. not calculated per county. It's you you have a base fee and then a usage base yeah um, calculation for the county. That's on top correct. Of the base fee. That's correct. So, so really, think, our utilization is fairly low, is what you're saying. I I am saying that. Uh -huh. I am saying, and I believe that that more could be. Could be utilized. I mean, I don't know that for a fact. No, but I but see what you're saying. What is the base fee? I mean, let's eight hundred dollars a year. Okay, so everything above the eight hundred is what you're basing our utilization in our county on for the yeah. remainder and of it's what not, we're putting in. And it's not much. No, it's not. So, but and, all and these I things are available. I can't provide. I can't. I can't provide the answer as to why you're not more. Is Lincoln County utilizing. one of the lowest in the eighteen? Yes. Interesting. That's very interesting. Yes, it is. So, and and as I just want to say that. I think the other thing to notice, and I want to point this out, although uh, we do have a housing uh, assistance program, I saw Section, that. Eight. Section 8, yeah. and this program will help people, and, and they don't have to be 60 and over, by the way, they can help people of any age looking for subsidized rental assistance. And uh, that's also it's not just it, so they don't have to be seniors. That that program's just orchestrated through your right. organization. That's right. That's I did not. I've never yeah. heard that. Yeah. And and when we took on the program, the folks that had said both our focus was to be helping people in rural areas of Kansas. Mm -hmm. So, you know, I'm guessing there's probably some people that can take advantage of that. We do have a waiting list now, mm -hmm. but we always encourage people to get on that waiting list mm -hmm. because if they don't get it on waiting list it's like well it's like buying a ticket to win the powerball you won't it's ever always down the road then <laughs> yeah yeah, yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. but but we do encourage that so i just wanted to point that out mm -hmm. okay so that's that um i've given you a copy of keynotes i've given you a copy of the brochure and there's one other thing i want to tell you about because this is happening april 19th uh, we have a health care decisions day uh, where we're bringing uh, our legal expert on durable powers of attorney and living wills and they're going to be in Silver Grove on the 19th of April. Okay, I think I've got copies ready. Um, we will be sending this out to all media in this part of the state. But uh, I just want to say that uh, Paul Ship, who is our with Flint Hills Legal Services, is a wonderful presenter. And let me also say that powers of attorney, living wills, those uh, health care decisions that everybody needs, when, especially as we get a little older in our uh, time frame, very important documents, and we know a lot of people don't have them. And whether you're planning to be at home or whether you're going to live in a nursing home, you need them. So uh, we hope that we'll see a lot of folks come out to 
uh, Sylvan for, to hear Paul Shipp's presentation. Lunch will be available. You do need to call us and tell us that you're coming. Uh, and we also are scheduling one-on-one -on -one appointments with people to get this legal work done on site, which we, we know to be very helpful and useful. Or if, you don't, if you've already got a power of attorney, you already got a living will, but you have questions or it's been a long time since you looked at it, Paul Shipp and other attorneys, if we have need, will come, be there, and review those documents with you. So, and that's for free? That's free. Nice. We always accept contributions. That's amazing. But we are able to do this, and I, I want to just say now, uh, the Older Americans Act, the Federal Older Americans Act makes this possible. And by the way, uh, our friends uh, and leaders in Washington are looking at the Older Americans Act right now in terms of their funding and funding allocations. I would, if you have con connections to Senator Moran, Senator Roberts, our Congressman Marshall, please ask them to make sure that the Older Americans Act funding is safe and that, if possible, to increase because the needs are there. You know them well in this county. Well, thank you. Are there any other questions that any of you have? No, I think this was very thorough. I appreciate all the information. That's good explanation. And I appreciate the opportunity to come and, and be with you today. I also want to express my appreciation to the County Council on Aging for the work that they do. I want to express my appreciation once again to Glenn and to Cynthia for their service uh, on our Board of Directors. Thank you. Yeah, Thank you. And I'd be happy to come again. Just let me know if you have questions. Or call me. All right. Thanks so much. Safe travel to you. Yes. And I love seeing babies. Yes. So. <laughs> Thank you. We need to address them now. For the budget. Later. For the budget. Mm -hmm. When do we do the budget? In summer? We need to start working on it in May so that we can right. be ready in June. June is when we approve it. Uh, I think, is it ask uh, during the budget? First of July? Yeah. Okay. When do we do our budget, a preliminary budget approval? Come August. Oh, Not till August? Okay. I was just curious when we're waiting on the funding comes. Yeah, yes. okay. Uh, Donald sent it. Evaluation. Evaluation. Evaluation of uh, Rhonda, again, or whatever. Thanks, Kim. Thank you. 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 Yeah. 
I mean, at least, yeah, at least, you know, you have some business before you start. So, you know, and then, uh, whereas, Yeah, we got it. Those conferences out there. I went to the this this one in May, yeah. April. Uh, whether it went once or twice. Once I was supposed to uh, use. I was going, and then we had a death in the family, so I had to cut my time short. Oh. But, uh, it was okay. It was, I guess I'll do it. Yeah, it, it's, it's nice. You get to meet some commissioners from other, yeah. hear well, some of their problems that they have. I went to the uh, one in Topeka, you know. Yeah. And that was pretty good, and, you know. Uh, yeah, but it's showing you what's going on, kind of. Like you say, you meet the other people from there. Yeah. Other counties, you can kind of talk to them what's going on there. Yeah. Yeah. Perhaps, perhaps he's making way more money than I'm making. And going, and he's headed for Florida the next week. And to amend the agenda. Let's see. All right, we no longer have Michael or Jennifer on the schedule, and I told Rhonda we would contact her in just a bit. So you would like a few minutes. Okay. okay. Yeah. Yep, I think we're ready for you. Uh, Okay, so I've talked to each, I'm here to rub you, obviously, to represent the EMS. I think I can EM most all of, in general. I can represent everyone on on the EMS. I'm one of, obviously, one of the, the senior members of the department. Oh, that doesn't make me the smartest or the most qualified, but I am one of the old guys. I mean, I've got pretty near 40 years of fire and EMS yet. 
I, I, I just wanted, as a taxpayer and a member of the EMS, I wanted to make, I want to make very, very certain that you folks on your interview process that, uh, number one, you hire somebody that's a good quality person, number two, that has obviously the skills, uh, the qualifications, uh, the training, uh, that can be a good leader for us, uh, and probably maybe even most importantly as someone that the crew can respect and and follow their lead and uh, uh, because I'm afraid if that doesn't happen uh, we're gonna lose some people and EMS personnel are scarce as hen's teeth in, in counties in western Kansas anymore every county in western Kansas I mean almost every county is is um, suffering from low numbers people getting out and not getting young people not getting in there's a couple reasons for that a lot of it is is the uh, the commitment that it is I mean uh, it takes a lot of training uh, the state is constantly forcing more uh, qualifications upon us more training uh, so it is a commitment and uh, uh, so, you know, if we lose people, they're going to be really hard to replace. And part of that being, I'm sure you're all aware of, we're an ALS, an ALS certified um, service. Okay, if we lose uh, several of our advanced life support, ALS meaning advanced life support, BLS is basic life support. If we lose some ALS people, and we can't replace them right away. We're going to be back to a BLS service because you're not going to have the the people to cover 24 hours a day in an ALS setting. So we're going to be back to a basic life support EMT, which was that's what I am. I'm I'm basic. Okay. I did have one time had a higher qualification, and they changed. They dropped that qualification, and I chose not to take the extra training to bump up to an even higher even higher one. But uh, anyways, uh, so we're going to lose some, I'm afraid if we're not careful about who we hire, uh, that we're going to lose some people. And I do not want to see that. You know, the money is not the issue for me. The money is off the table for me. I'm a volunteer. I've been doing it for 30, like I say, 30, 40 years. And the money means nothing to me. I mean, uh, now, but obviously our full-time people that have made it their careers, uh, made it their livelihood, it is an issue for them. And I understand that, you know, the county has some budget restraints. We all understand that. I'm a taxpayer also. Uh, so those things, well, I understand you need to take that into consideration too. But uh, the, the main point being is we really need, the crew needs somebody that we can respect uh, and that we can follow their lead, somebody that has really good training skills for us, uh, which uh, I'm not going to beat around the bush. Uh, the gentleman that is our interim director right now is very good in those fields. He's, he's, we've had more training in the last year since he's been around than we've had in ages. Okay, and good training, good, good classes. We're learning things, new stuff that's coming down the pipe for us all the time. And he's training us. Uh, you so know. you're saying there's been an increase in quality assurance yes, yes, since the last interim director to the new interim right. director. Right, and I'm not going to throw anybody under the bus. Uh, no, but that's what you're saying. Yeah, you've but had he, a has, lot of he has. Mm -hmm. He's done He's doing a very good job with training, with keeping up on, uh, uh, you know, uh, taking care of outdated meds and things that are on the trucks that need to be, you know, those all have expiration dates. He's doing a very good job of keeping up on inventory, on equipment, on training. I mean, the crew all gets, as far as the best of my knowledge, you know, everyone gets along with him well. You know, I understand there, you know, there potentially could be a personnel issue there, but that's, you know, I know you're in the process of trying to hire an HR person. Those things can be dealt through HR, you know, uh, if you're up front about it. And, and uh, you know, I, I sit, I have 18 years on the school board, so I, I sit on you guys' the side of the table a lot. I've been through issues like this, and you know, we can work through things like that. 
Uh, you had said you're here to represent the department. Does that yeah. mean you're here to represent volunteers? Both. Both what? Volunteers and and the uh, the paid people. Have you been asked by the paid personnel to come? We had a meeting. Well, we had an actual training tra uh, training meeting Wednesday night. Most of the document that was presented to you guys. We put that, I kind of was the instigator of that, okay, I, I said we need to, because after I talked to all three of you, and I told you I think we need, we need some input, I believe I told you, I, you know, so we all got together, it worked out well, because we actually had a scheduled meeting that night, uh, and uh, so, I, uh, uh, so we sat down, and put that document together, uh, I, I've talked to, since then, I, you know, I've talked to several other members. I said, hey, I may go to the commission uh, on Monday and to speak, and then they all, you know, gave me their blessing, you know, go, go ahead if that's, your, if that's what you want to do. So, yes, I, you know, I, I don't have anything in writing that says yes, everyone signed, other than we signed that document, everyone that was at the meeting the other night signed that document that was presented to you. Uh, guys on, on we have side. that listed in our correspondence from right. the meeting, and I will say we didn't have a chance to get back to you, but I will say I appreciate all of the input that you gave. You guys, you had listed some questions that you wanted asked in the interview. You'd mm -hmm. also listed some of the qualifications mm -hmm. as part of what maybe the job description. Mm -hmm. And I did myself. I mean, we all looked <laughs> at it, but I did myself compare what we have as our job description for that department head to what you guys had suggested and it, mm -hmm. it's a, a lot of it's already in there maybe in a exactly. little bit different exactly. wording Which but we it, it was very yes. yes and I appreciate the input it was helpful mm -hmm. and um, I think that was not it, it, it did not go unaddressed I mean we definitely Good. looked that, it over and I appreciate sure. that mm -hmm. yeah you know, I know uh, as I spoke you know before um, no matter who you are uh, it's got to be somebody that the crew can have respect for Absolutely. And and that we can trust that will lead us the direction that we need to go. And you know, like I said, I, you know, I've got 30, 40 years and we've came a long, long, long ways from 30, 40 years ago. I mean, it was throw them in the back of an old ambulance and drive as fast as we could drive, you know. And those days are over. Yeah, you still have to drive fast once in a while, but we do so many more things uh, uh, with EMS anymore than what we used to do. Uh, Part of it is because of mandates from the state. Part of it's because of necessity. Uh, you know, we're, we're at best we're two hours from a major trauma center. Uh, Who tracks the Sylvan volunteer crew as far as their credentials and? Well, their that's all. I mean, we're all part of the Lincoln County EMS, so that's all tracked through. So um, we hold their director. credentials here, Don. Is that? You can look it up. You can go on to. I know it has a Kansas yeah. State Board of EMS right. credentialing, yeah, yeah, but do we actually keep credential. track of of our volunteers' credentials? I don't. No, we don't. Okay. But so I, does anyone in Sylvan do that for the Sylvan no, volunteer? No, I think our group? files are just all through the state. File. Well, or but I think we all have a file down in the director's office. We used to have anyway. I mean, okay. We all had a okay. file. Okay. You're of saying all that our the department head has kept track right. of the volunteers. Exactly. Okay. And are we? Have we been paying for updated? Um, training, have we been paying for that through the department for you, you mean guys? As far as our certification? Mm -hmm. You know, I don't know. I, I recertified at the end of, of this last year was because we recertify every two years. So I, I sent my, a copy of my certification in. I don't know if I ever got paid for it or not. You know, you got any idea? <laughs> and I can't look it up. Yeah, that, that's fine. And, and there again, the money is not the real issue for me. Okay, I have I own a business. If I get you know when I go on a call for an EMS call, I make what ten, twelve bucks an hour. You know what to do if I can't make that much money? I lose way more than that when I leave my lose my own business. Leave actually, my own business. Actually, Mark, we you don't pay the state anymore. That's the right. You're correct. Service has been paying the state, so the state that, pays for their recertification. That's right. And you're the right. ambulance service pays the instructor to instruct the class, if that's what your question was. Yes. So, like, um, when Brandon's teaching on Wednesday nights, we're paying him for his time to teach. Okay. Normally. Is that out of our contract line item? 
um, a judge comes out of payroll. It's paid. Oh, well, okay, because it's this. Yes. But if we were to bring someone else in, would that be contractual? Yes. Okay. Okay, there we go. So Sorry, I, I kind of I forgot. We, we and then the is there a fee then for each individual cert recertification? So like every two years? Every two years. And whoever is up normally the annuals director knows who that is and they send in all the paperwork and all the proof of training. Well, okay. it, it's changed now. I don't know if that's on the job description. It, it's, okay, that has changed here in the last couple of weeks. All this stuff is all online. And so I was, and to be honest with you, Brandon had to help me through this because I'm an old dog. It's hard to teach old dog new tricks. All this, all of our training requirements are online. We have to have, it's, we used to, okay, so I have to have uh, uh, 18 hours. Say I have to have 18 hours of, of CEUs a year. So that's 30. So now I have, instead of every year recertifying, so I have two years to get 36 hours. Now, we used to be able to have that in any category of training as long as it was a, by a certified um, trainer and had a, uh, a, a number from the Board of EMS that it was approved. It didn't matter if it was, if we were training in CPR, vehicle accidents, whatever. Now they've broken that down into categories and you have to have so many hours in this category, so many hours in that category. And it's confusing, and we can do a lot of the, we can do a lot of it online, uh, but it's confusing. I had to have Brandon help me through it a lot, because otherwise I wouldn't have got it done, because I had no clue what I was doing. <laughs> Be honest with you, as far as the training goes. Um, so, uh, so that in that regard, you're not talking to the expert about. It. You need to talk, you know, if you really want to know all the training requirements and how that all works. I'm not the person you need to be talking to about. <coughs> excuse me about that, uh, but it has changed a lot in the last few years on that regard. Well, that's something good to know because I honestly I don't remember seeing that particular uh, function listed on our job description. Well, I, so it, I will definitely follow up on that. Thank you for bringing that to our might attention. Be something that needs to be updated mm -hmm. in your job description too, as far as the training part goes. Mm -hmm. It says responsible for training, but it doesn't necessarily say keeping the certificate records and mm -hmm. making sure that we are paying for either the additional hours if one of our staff members is doing the training or when, the contract when, training. When Wendy was here, she was really good at keeping track of all that for mm -hmm. us. I mean, she probably maybe was too good about it. We got, because we, as individuals, we got kind of lax about it. You now, Wendy's taking care of that. I have to worry about it, mm -hmm. you know. And maybe that's not being responsible for yourself either, letting somebody else worry about it, you know. But uh, she was very good about it. And like I said, but Brandon really helped me get through it this, this last, end of this last year, because otherwise I, I'd have been lost. That's good. <laughs> so, uh, uh, in that regard. But like I said, the, the main point that I want to get across is we, we need to have somebody that the crew will, can respect and will respect and that we can get along with and has, you know, Obviously, the qualifications, but some experience too, because just because uh, you know we go through training, but very seldom. I mean, uh, do things actually happen in the field the way we train for it? I mean, we try to be prepared for it, but there's so many variables in every call that we go to. Uh, it has to be somebody that has had experience riding in the back of that truck, that's had experience, you know, uh, with car accidents, gunshot victims, uh, you know, the list goes on and on and on and on. Uh, so we, we need somebody that's experienced and someone that we can trust and respect. And I, I trust you all will do, you know, the right thing there. And, and and uh, that's what the crew wants. The crew wants a good boss. I mean, we want, you know, we want somebody that tells us when we need to step it up or improve or whatever. Uh, there's nothing wrong with that. I don't, I don't think anyone has an issue with that. But it's also got to have something we can respect. So, uh, if you don't have any further questions for me, I'll get out of here. I appreciate your time and, and your consideration. Thank you. Okay. Thank you. Right, thank you. that letter too should get a good for <laughs>
that, that was just, I wanted to see if I had the job description in my folder, but I, I think I said, I should have said it right here, and I made it on fine, I'm sorry. Did you need something, Ron? I've got enough of the time, don't hurt my else. I don't think we have anything on the agenda at the moment. We've had a lot of amendments, so please come forward. Well, I'm wrapping bids for the weed department. Oh, okay. Those, need, yeah. We'll get those two. Two. Uh, are you going to do something fairly quick or 30 days? Do you have any idea? I assume. I, I don't know. We are later this year than it has been in the past. I don't necessarily know why. Dan did come in and I asked him, and he said he was in the process of getting the bids. Um, you give them to Dan if you want. Probably looks at Do you, you don't open them here? We can, I mean, yeah, you brought it to the public meeting, so we'll, he, we'll make he a can, call. Uh, yeah, but he usually brings them all to us at once. I mean, you know. But I don't think that's a sealed bid thing. I think he just calls for pricing, so. Yeah, he usually cheers the prices. We'll just get a copy and. And those prices are, are good for at least have 30 days. 30 days, okay. At least. All right. All right. I'm just going to mark 30 okay. days now. Okay, thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Very thank much. you. Thank thank you. Good. Have a good day. You do. Okay. Um, I have EMS director job description and ambulance. I think the main change here that was made. Let's I'll give you one of each because it it appears to me that there was a change made during last year. And what happened was the change was here. Which is the newest one? Okay, so this was the first one that I was given in 2017. This, this was changed in 18 and we did ask for we did ask for the HR director at the time to go through all the departments, request changes from the department heads, and then apply those changes. So it looks to me like the change that must have been requested internally um, comes down here under, on the, on the first one it says supervises for patient billing, collecting patient fees, receiving money, and bookkeeping. And then on the new one it just says assist in patient billing. So I'm not sure how we can hire a director that we're asking to assist someone else in the billing process. I really don't agree with that, and I, I've apologized before that I didn't catch that. Um, I think we were relying on the input that we received from the HR who was corresponding with the director at the time. So I really think we need, as the board, need to officially adopt one of these. I would recommend the first one with any necessary changes, and that is entitled Ambulance Service Director. Um, and the other one is EMS director. But I do think in the county realm, they refer to it as EMS, emergency, or emergency medical services. So maybe we do want to list that as the heading as far as the position. But the major changes with, you said, is who was responsible patient, for the billing. Supervising patient billing, mm -hmm. collecting patient fees, re accepting, receiving money, I guess it should say. It says receipting money. Receipting, Re like keeping track of the receipts. Recept, yeah, receiving money and booking. Yeah. And the other list one doesn't have it. It has responsible for reviewing it, patient reports. It actually and changed the wording to um, assisting in billing, and I just... Assist in patient billing. Okay. Well, that does, that's yeah, very vague and what that means. And currently now we hire a... Uh, it's number thir bullet point 13 versus 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. And currently now we hire a... Uh, 10, bullet point 10. A comp company that processes our billing, right? We have employed a third-party billing company who receives our information and does the coding. I think the employees are still supposed to code what they're doing into the data network. Is that correct, Don? They still code what they're doing in or what they've done they on the run. Their ambulance run, and then when it's complete, they do something with it. I don't really know what. And what is that network called? KSIMS or Kempsis or? No, uh, it's. I want to say it's called Image Trend. What they oh. data enter into. Okay. But it's like it's it's provided through the Kansas Board of EMS. Okay. So they build their run report when 
they get complete, then the building company goes in, picks up the run report, and then there's a place where they can change, build on that so that the director knows that that claim has been built. If there's anything that's still pending, the director knows there's some kind of issue with that run and it's not ready. And then I think what he's they've been doing is changing anything that's like a non-transport or considered a fire standby or a sporting event standby. They, they build a run for every one of those people. Every time that ambulance leaves the bay for a call, might you say, but if they don't transport anybody, then they call that a closed thing, and then I... So it's know, still it's logged in transport. as when the vehicle is attending an event, but it's not necessarily billable if it's just a standard... Like when it comes to a football right. game and nothing right. happens, it comes back, there's no billing on that. Right? Correct. But they're still logging it into well, the data should, yeah. entry. And, and even if they went there and there was something, that creates a whole new run. Sure. So, so if they have, let's just throw a number out there, 380 runs last year, they might actually only have 300 runs that was have patients that is billable. Billable runs. They might have 80 that are considered. 80 that patients. were, yeah, nothing, no patients. And I don't know, I'm just. And they have a code for each one of them, right, that they would enter on, what, for, well, and that's how, to, that's how you billing code. They have to code. build a run, run report. So. For example, a very, very long time ago when I did billing, any time that a helicopter came in and picked up a patient, we billed to transport that patient to the helicopter. At some point in time, that stopped being billed. They weren't even reporting that information or recording that information. Now they've gone back to where they're billing it, and they're inputting or patient information into that run sheet. Now, it may be different than what a normal run is. I don't, I don't really know that side of it. Like you said, though, any time that it leaves the yeah. facility down here, there should be documentation saying it left the facility in one way or another, and it's whether you have patients or not, and all this every time it's. Mm -hmm. and that's, now, if they're just going out. If they're going to go service, out, yeah, yeah, if they're going to change the oil on it, probably not, or no. something like that, yeah, yeah. or whatever, washing. Because when they're going to perform a service. Yeah, and a, yeah, a real, a real emergency or a real uh, issue. Okay. Is crisis intervention assistance, would that be, um, because it's, it's saying that the, the job description says that the department head provides crisis intervention assistance to personnel. Is that basically if there was a counseling service needed? That yes. They would, okay, so they don't necessarily provide it, they coordinate, coordinate it. Coordinate yeah. yeah, so I'm going to change that word. Do we also have on here like uh, like the uh, works for getting grants and stuff? That's a good. Because uh, mm -hmm. one of our uh, mm -hmm. yes, one excellent of our idea. Interviewees talked about that. talked about a some some sort of a spending policy and I think we had talked about we're going to exclude necessary supplies but we've actually been informed in an interview and even by our own um, acting director that there's a range there's a magic number somewhere five hundred or thousand dollars as far as request getting them to request approval from us so do we want to set that I think that could easily Go into the job description. We don't need to have an entire policy written out that's separate. I mean, if they're if they go by the job description when they work, then it's it's pretty simple. It's a one page front and back, absorb this and live by it kind of thing. Um, I think we could easily just slip in there because it says purchases supplies and equipment as necessary, and you could say with approval over seven hundred dollars or something like that. I mean, what number do you feel comfortable with? I said thousand. That's just expensive nowadays, you know. I'm just going to give one example. They bought three recliners down there, <laughs> and they spent quite a bit of money on them, and people were very upset when they heard about that. 
So we we know we're excluding medical supplies and things. Medical that supplies they have to. They can budget. They can buy five thousand dollars worth of that without our approval, because that's part of the job. Right. I mean, so we'll just write but, excluding. Ex, uh, uh, Non-traditional. Well, non no, he had a word for it. Uh, Maybe consumables related to the service. Yeah. I, there's probably something more professional. But. Because when they consume it, they need to be able to place. Right. Immediately. Without. Yes. We don't need to give them direction on that. So do you want to go with a thousand dollars? I don't know. Okay, so I'm going to put purchase of supplies and equipment as necessary with approval over $1,000, exception of service related consumables. I'll give you these notes, Don. That would be great. Yes, yeah. I'm not. Yeah. Going to open I would also like to add that they report to the commission. Um, there was something worded in there. Let me find it. Should we almost state like a monthly report to the commission? It is down there. Provides board of commissioners with monthly update and department activity. Oh, they got is that it. on the new one? I don't know. It's the EMS director. Yeah, that's the new one. Okay, so we asked for that to be on there, so we need to transfer that okay. over. Okay. The newer one has the revised date at the bottom. Yeah, so I want to add that one. What's on this new one? Okay, so I'll go back to... She's merging two of them. Right. I, what happened was when we asked for this to be revised last year, there were a couple um, changes, and one that I don't find as helpful, they changed bullet number 13 point on the first one into bullet number 10, bullet point number 10 on the second one. So it went from supervises for patient billing, collecting patient fees, and receiving the money in bookkeeping, and it changed over to assists in patient billing. I think that is definitely a supervisory role, and even even no matter how long we keep a third-party billing company, there still needs to be someone responsible at the county level, and I don't believe that belongs in any other department, especially not on another elected official. I don't, I don't personally feel like you can tell a department that they are responsible for a budget and not expect them to be responsible for the revenue that's coming yeah. into that budget. If they're a supervisor, they're responsible for both, whether they like it or not. Mm -hmm. well, they're the ones doing. After they're the ones doing the run, and when it comes in, they know what they did. We don't. Exactly. And nobody, they got to say we did a run and it, and they have and it build for this. They have to now. be making sure that it's being completed. Yeah. I mean, yeah. I I can do that, and I, I'm getting blamed for that, and I that's know. fine. I'll take that responsibility. But the remat the. The fact of the matter is, is I have no idea when the ambulance is going out. Yes, we have a radio that works half the time in our office, but that doesn't mean I'm glued to it or that I even no. pay attention to the noise that it's well, making. Well, and even that, there's different types of billing for different services, Yes, right? so I have no idea. Your, that's not your job. They that's got not it. my they, job. That's not my responsibility. It's not my yeah. responsibility to make sure that the employees are doing their portion of the job. That is the supervisor's position. And that billing comes in line with, are they doing, because... Number one, they can't build something if the employees aren't doing their job. So it all kind of correlates together. Whether and the, somebody the wants to take responsibility or not, it is their responsibility. Right, and the director of the department is the only one who has direct access to each employee to be able to have that type of communication. We are not going to go down there and ask them, what did you do on this run and can you show me how to code it? Yeah. That person overseeing that process should be there on site regularly who would be the director. And we're not big enough to have... A, a director and a billing coordinator and a this and a that. The one person at the central focal point needs to take responsibility for all of those things. So I think there's a little bit of merging still that needs to be done here. As far as, you know, them provide them preparing their own budget. It as long says, as our next direct well, yeah, you can't say it. I was gonna say as long as our next director knows what we require of them, but that person may leave in five years and then we we want to have it in writing what we want. Mm -hmm. And I think we, we need really to need to have this percent. finalized. We have one more interview today before we deliberate on what we've done thus far. And this really, we need to be able to present this to someone professionally and say, these are our expectations. Yeah. And I think our expectations in the past have been lax. And even if they've been there, they've not been enforced. So it's time to roll that over, just like Mark was here to express his concern about who we hire. It's not so much of who we hire. We have plenty of qualified applicants. It's what we expect them to do and then making sure that it gets done. Um, the, this part about 
um, performs general public relations work, you know, I don't even know if that's necessary. I, I think a way that it is because I think what they're talking about there is like making sure that the bay that that they are receptible to have schools come in and tour and things like that. Okay, Among I see themselves, what you're saying. I think is more. Or go to the school and get a talk or something. Yeah, it, it so and that depends public on outreach. Much, public yes. out, I'm going to word that as public outreach a little bit or add that in there. That's maybe. what I view that as. Is, I see. As, yeah, I didn't funny. know what that meant. And having good relationships with your health department and the hospital and everybody. Yeah, the yeah. nursing home wants. Sure. That is figured out. Oh, this is on here. Overseas continuing education and recertification of department personnel. I would say and funding. We want to make sure that that's being properly funded. I think that's important. I mean, if we're going to expect to have a 24-7 service, we should be funding the credentialing, the updates, the recertification. And we may even want to promote internal growth as far as sending them on to get receive you know get to their next level do we of do, achievement do we do that now some like emt wants to be a paramedic do we pay for the schooling for something like that no we don't but we have applied for like the state of kansas has a grant that i if i understand how it works right we basically apply for the funding for the students and then they can utilize it towards but it's basically all in the so students. we can help them get grants and stuff to do that Yes. There was um, one employee, I don't remember which one, recently that we had hired, I mean, a year ago or so. No. Was that what we were doing? We were we applied for the grant money and then they were giving X amount of time before they got put on the payroll? Um, no. So, I'm looking at it as two different subjects. Our current employees advancing to be a paramedic. We have never paid for that. Okay. Now, have we paid for classes for people in the community to take the EMT class? We apply for a grant for that, we bring it in, that grant helps pay for the instructor, it doesn't pay 100% of the cost, but you do that with the hopes that you get some EMTs out of it. Mm -hmm. We got one EMT out of that last class mm -hmm. that is participating, that was able to pass the test, the exam. And so with that, then he is required to give us 20 hours of volunteer hours oh, that's, per, okay. per month. Is that part of the grant process? Is that what they, okay. Yes, that's part of the grant repayment type thing, and then that, that money, and then the service has to document that. Now, when our, you have to forgive me because first off, I'm going to tell you things that, that their certifications is no longer there. But it used to be that we had an EMT, and then they could go to EM, EMTD training, which was a defibrillator. We would pay for that cost for them to do that, and then once they pass the certification, then we would give them an increase for doing that. And then they did an I, so that we had EMT Ds and Is. They've now changed all that classification. I have no idea where it's at, but I would say that if you had an EMT who wanted to do the advanced class, that we would probably pay to send them to go do that, you know, pay for the initial class. And then once they pass their certification, then increase their pay. I don't know. I don't know if they've necessarily even come and asked you that. So, and I know, um, like when Wendy was here, that's when the conversion occurred. So she had to have some classes in order to get everybody. And that's where Mark was talking about. He, he chose go. not to yeah. do it. So, yeah. but I would say that we would be willing to train them if they, they want to be. You've never been willing, the board has never been willing to pay for paramedic school though. That's probably expensive. I don't know. Well, and we could, I mean, or anyone could develop some sort of program where, you know, you match their, you know, if they want to pay 50%, you pay yeah, 50% or something, yeah. or you pay upon their completion and certification kind of thing. I mean, reimburse them. There are all kinds of ways to support and promote educational growth without necessarily having it be a loss to the county. Um, and then require them to work here a minimum of one to two years or something mm -hmm. after we get a degree because we don't want to educate them with paramedic and then they just take off to somewhere else a, a mm -hmm. month later. Right. right. Well, and I'm not worried about that part as much right now as definitely clarifying this position so that we have a better, so we have a better understanding and so that that person knows exactly their expectations. I mean, I think when you hire someone, they sign their job description and then they're held to it. You know, if we keep going like this, <laughs> it's not my responsibility, it's someone else's. You know, that's not going to flow well. Um, like, you've been here a while. Like, 
years and years ago, and I don't want to know if I'm going to if it was a billing done okay then, and when Wendy was here, was all the billing done by her? No. Yeah, no? No. It went through you? Or? So when I started for the county, one of my jobs was to bill. Okay. At the time, you had a book, and what we were told was you bill anything that's unspecified. So if a patient presented, if the EMT wrote abdominal pain, we, tr we were called because this person was experiencing abdominal pain. We would go to the book for abdominal pain, and we would code it, whatever it said, which was unspecified. Okay. Not the most convenient, because number one, I'm not a medical person, so I really have no idea besides what I was doing. What, and then when Medicare would deny it, then we would send in, we'd have to call the hospital, get the hospital, the doctor to write something up to say that they required this by ambulance, that they had no other means, or that that was the best form of treatment. We would send it in. Um, protest the claim basically or, or contest it and then either we would a get paid or not get paid and at that point in time it becomes the patient's responsibility your whole goal was to get it to say that it's patient's responsibility so that if their insurance denied it you could get money because if they say that it's not that it's your responsibility then you can't collect your money so it was a little bit easier then still a little bit difficult because we were asked to 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 bill things that we didn't know what we were I'm just going to be honest with you. I didn't know what I was doing. Besides, I would pick out something that looked good and <laughs> code, code it. Yeah. Now, with the change of the ICD-9 to 10, you have to be very more, a lot more specific. Like, they want to know, was this because of an accident? Was this because of a health-related issue? They want to know. And if your attendants don't get the information, you can't complete the online portion of it to get down okay. to. And they want to know nitty gritty down to if you, we're just gonna throw this out there, broke a toe, which toe was it that it was broke? Right. So the and attendant has so to specifically yeah. say, right side. Thank you, toe. Yes. <laughs> yes. And I know I'm oversimplifying. No, it because if you, no you've no, done you're, that in healthcare all the way around. I mean, now when you go to the doctor's office, you have to answer 16 no, questions. No, you're explaining it real well exactly. because you're explaining it now. Yeah. It's so much more specific yeah. that it makes it more cumbersome. Yes. Yes. And so, you know, and Deborah had asked Wendy for a new book, and yeah. Wendy said, yes, I'll get it for you. Mm -hmm. But she never did. But they were also supposed to be coding, so we never really worried about it too much. When the next director came in, Sue Vavrick came in, Deborah asked her right away, I need a code book. Because, number one, she needed to be able to not have to just Google the number that the attendants were saying was the code. Uh, never got a code book. I, I think she asked Brett, but I'm not really sure if she did or if she didn't. And I'm quite honestly, now that I think about it, I should have bought her the darn book and just billed it to the ambulance service. But hindsight is twenty yeah, twenty. Right, yeah. right. But regardless, I don't think even if she had had a code book, it would have done any good. And when I say the cost of the code book, it's like six hundred to seven hundred and seven dollars. It's not like you're talking about a nineteen dollar book that somebody could get. Yeah, it's and awesome. it's the old code book was about this thick, and the print was about this small. But I think what she was having to do was Google what codes were. Yeah. And they and, would tell you online. Huh? Yeah. And, and I know that there's more things online than what, because she showed me the one day, but to be honest with you, I was a little on the overwhelmed side and she was taking care of it, so I didn't really worry about it. Although I probably should have been. Um, yeah, with the EMS people, when they go on a run, then they provide you, you and, or, and Deb with enough information saying, here's a run we had, uh, there was a car wreck, and Guy broke his arm. They gave you a good description of what happened, so then you knew what to kind of do. No. No, they didn't. So that's, that's what they. they that's got, where they, my employee was struggling. With. Yeah, well, they dropped. And the when list. she sent it yeah. back, now when Wendy was there and she sent it back, Wendy would take care of it and get it fixed and then bring the run back. Okay. But now when when that was but that so that, she just didn't do that, it. that handed and yes. that's therefore we had this gap here. And, yes. Okay. What I, and and the one time I told her, I said, I don't care. Their job is to code it to code call down there and tell them to get it coded. And um, she just wouldn't do it. And she, I finally asked her why, and she said, because you're the bitch all the time. They think you're the effing B. <laughs> and she says, and I'm tired of it. It's not your fault. I don't mind being that person. You know, does it feel good to have everybody hate you? No, it does not feel good. But I don't mind being the scapegoat. Yeah. 
everybody had a job to do and what I'm trying to say is everybody failed to do their job. Now whatever that might be. Now I hear, well, you know, Deborah's the one that said, I'll do all the coding. I, I didn't hear that. If she told somebody that, she didn't say it in front of me. Regardless, that doesn't make any sense because I, I think the major miscommunication is he, he, we have a separate building, okay? We have an EMS building. Out of that building come the personnel, the equipment, and all of the supplies. Whatever happens down there is not necessarily known and privy to anyone outside of the functioning inside that building. Mm -hmm. So, therefore, there has to be a point of contact responsibility, and that's what we're establishing. And, unfortunately, in the past, it's been very wishy-washy. There's been high turnover, and, you know, it's it needs to be reestablished, and the commission needs to take responsibility for that, not you. You're an elected official. We are elected officials, but we are charged with overseeing other departments. You are not necessarily. In the paperwork aspect of it, you are. And, unfortunately, that's where the information crossing comes in, because sometimes you're the only one that knows something, and you have to bring it to us. Mm -hmm. And we can be blamed all we want, saying you should have known, but we are not part of that paperwork process, so thank you for doing that for us. Um, that being said, I think it's very simple. We, we re-evaluate this job description and have expectations that come with it. And that's it. You know, that's where you, where you draw the line. Um, one of the things I see on here, it says provides follow-up to citizens' inquiries in a timely manner. I think that doesn't... Well, that would be basically for their... Oh, if they're only information. Okay, yeah. okay. Patient. Can we call it patient? Yes. Patient communication. Otherwise, I'm not really sure what. I, I mean, funny. citizens might ask questions, and I just don't know what they are. No, I think that was referring would to be patient, like if, patient communication. Like if you gave, they had a, picked up somebody and gave a ride to the hospital, then the patient may want to know what that's going to cost them or something. Mm -hmm. that, that type of thing. Mm -hmm. Well, the perfect example is we had someone come in about a billing issue. Yeah. If that had been explained to them by the point of contact that the state law says, X amount of time, new billing run, then that would have been, uh, the, the, the issue would have been quelched at, at the time. Instead, we dealt with it because we were yeah. dealing with a, a roundabout well, thing. There was an uncertainty on the, the uh, requirements, well, requirements of the billing. And they did call... They did call and ask, and he told them that they needed, if there was going to be any changes to a bill, that it would have to go through you guys. So when she called me, she was calling me to get on the agenda. More yeah, or less. that's but fine. That worked okay. Where does, well, go ahead. And do it. So I, I'm not sure you want to change that to patient. I think citizens will include a patient, and there may be, I may question them about, my neighbor, the response to my neighbor. I may have an inquiry. But then in that case... But I will, I will it's not medical history. Mm -hmm. It's just the way things are set up, the way things are going. So they need to respond to people that have questions out there in the community, how this service operates. Patient and citizens. Okay. And I know, like, Wendy did go to the chamber luncheon and present and speak and mm -hmm. answer questions there and... Um, it's more PR sometimes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's, it's, it's strictly PR, and you need to, you need to do it. Well, that's good, I think, for the community to know know that, mm -hmm. know what's going on. Because telling mm -hmm. people to see the ambulance and this and that, they don't. They know they go get sick or injured people and take them to the hospital, but they don't know a lot of the inside. I think it's good to educate people on what's going on. Well, I, At least to a degree. I think it's important for me to say, I don't always know what's going on in that department. I don't always know what's going on in other departments. I kind of have a gist of what we have to deal with, but that doesn't necessarily mean it's accurate. Right. So, well, you don't know the whole picture, maybe. You know, part of it. Maybe. Yeah. But anyway, hopefully we'll, uh, uh, yeah, hopefully we'll to... alleviate this from happening again in the future. Right. That's the whole issue here. Right. And honestly, if they're going to have six employees, they have far more time to adequately do this than I have with two. Yeah, you got 20 things you want at one time up here. So I do have a question. Do you happen to know how many other counties relative to our, you know, what do I want to say? The dimensions of our county, the scope of our county, how many clerk's offices are doing that kind of, I mean, through the EMS? Not as many as what used to be. I want to say Mitchell County Clerk's Office still does the billing. Um, yeah, no, they use no, yeah, they contract with Delisa's now. No, they, they contract. They got into trouble. They got into the same problem we were at. Uh -huh. uh, I'm not sure that there's many 
one reason is, is because the ch change in the codes, because all that information got so specific uh -huh. that no longer a layman yeah. can do yeah, that. Yeah. You right. can no longer choose the unspecified. Yeah, and then <laughs> and also, you know, what's it take now? A year and a half or two years to get that coding mm -hmm. degree? Mm -hmm. I mean, it's it's quite an extensive yeah. Of course. Well, I would say yeah. that the clerk has enough responsibility outside of that that, not that you can't assist with the process, but the commission ultimately needs to ask that department to be responsive to us directly. So I'm going to say, provides the commission with monthly updates on budget status, department needs, and changes. I mean, even this part where it says develops and implements new department, department policies as required by federal, state, and county agencies, that's a, I would say that comes up to be an mm -hmm. essential function, and then we need to be told about that. Not that we'll remember all the ins right. and outs of it, but... But so that you know what's right. happening. Right. So that you can be better informed about the department. So right. Like it's not that are. we know how to do their job, but just that we are being updated on what's going on so that we know that things are happening. I mean, the, the stagnancy thing is, is questionable. I'll, I will fix this for you, and I think okay. that's most of it, unless you guys had something else you wanted me to addressed in these two different, they're not super different, but I, I noticed one of the other changes is assumes duties as a scheduled member of the ambulance crew a minimum of twice per week or on a, an as-needed basis. That would be the first one when we were assuming having a full-time director. This other one was changed to assumes duties and being scheduled on the ambulance once per week or on an as-needed basis. So I think what we're finding out with our interview process is really we need to work with the director you know, on how they want to schedule themselves, but I think we are looking at full-time position. Am I, I mean, do we need to, I think we need to establish that too. Yeah, well, I, you know, I, I think we probably do, but I think also, I guess I, one of my concerns is if, that the director does do runs. I, I think mm -hmm. it's extremely important work with each one of those individuals and, and know what's going on, I guess, is, is my, is my, so I, I think he needs to be on the schedule. Now, how much? I don't know. Mm -hmm. You know, is, is it 24 hours and 16 hours of administrative work enough, or is it 16 hours of runs and 24 hours of administrative work? I don't know. Well, I think that's where maybe but I think they rely it, on their expertise. I you think know. you rely on them, mm -hmm. but I think they've got to, they've got if we're going to go to a full-time director, we have got to figure out some way to reduce the cost. So I don't pay for it. Yeah, I mean that's you know either we're going to we're either we're going to get rid of some of those overtime hours, or he's going to or we're going to have to hire some more part-time so we don't have those hours, you know. But well, and some of that comes with what we're doing. I, I think that's it, if we kind of have our basic idea for next week's agenda. <laughs> Who else were you missing today that couldn't come? Oh, we need Rhonda. We need to do... Yeah, we need we're, to do we were going to get Rhonda back, but we got busy. Here. Right, so let's do, um, if that's 12 to 12.30, let's put Rhonda on the agenda. We'll, we'll need 15 minutes for ourselves, and then we'll need her to come in, so don't put her until 1. Okay. Does that make sense? If we have... Mm -hmm. Yeah, if you put her at one, then we know we have her coming at one, and we'll have to discuss that beforehand, or push it back maybe half an hour, but that should be fine. Okay. Anything else you can think of that we need on the agenda? Not that I can think of right now. How about if I bring this ambulance service director um, job description back with my edits, and then you can... That would be good, or if you want to leave that, I can edit and then email it out to you. I but I can make a photocopy so you have your original. That's fine. I mean, there's a lot of kind of cut and uh, I can email scribble on there. But I think I did. Can you I email me a Can you email me a version that I can edit? Yes, I email you the PDF that I so I will email you a word. Yeah, if you do that, then I'll do that and email it back to you, and then that'd be great. And you want the old one? I want the new one. I'm gonna. Or I'm sorry. I want the old one. Okay. You're right. I'm okay. going to take what we wanted kept in the new one and put it back in the old one, and then I'll send it back to you. Okay. Yeah, I just could not get it to open down here today. So. That's fine. That'll be, yeah. it'll be easier for me to do it anyhow because I can read my writing and arrows. Okay, if there's...
there is nothing. Oh, and we need to, the HR, let's, I, I think we need to stay next week. So let's go ahead and put one. I can more. stay later. Okay, let's go ahead and do one. Without Joe has to go. That's, yes. he'll just have to leave. Yeah. Because we can't keep avoiding this either. We have several no, applications. We got to. Yeah, right, we're going to choose, yeah. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. So we have 11 applicants. Let's, um, let's go ahead and do what we did last time and each individually choose, but then I still think we need to schedule a discussion so that we can choose a, an interview time. Do like we did three out of all of them? Yeah, let's try that. I, actually, I think what Don said was Aljo had list. He made a list from top to bottom. So if we all do that, we can do that. Our, our part, who we then whatever crossovers okay. happen, we choose. She chooses, and then we'll just bump I down to the next choice. Too, so yeah. I got an idea ready. And then next week, we can still at least discuss when we're going to schedule interviews and whatnot. Right. Okay, I think that covers mostly the priorities. Anyhow, okay. there's always something else. Okay, I'll adjourn the meeting until it would be, what date are we on? <laughs> Today's the first. I haven't April Fool's my... Day. There we go. Didn't you hear I won the lottery? I won a million bucks. Did you hear that? Oh, April Fool's. Ah! <laughs> I did work very well. Oh, really? You yeah. didn't blame me much. Okay, so it'll be, we're adjourning until Monday, April 8th at 10 a.m. in the basement meeting room of the courthouse. Thank you. Do you want that?